Hi, everyone, and welcome to Real Life Talks. I'm your host, Yvonne Heath, author of the book, Love Your Life to Death, and founder of the I Just Showed Up movement. So joining me today is my friend, Beth Grixty. Hello, Beth. How are you? I'm great. I, I pronounced that Grixty. I yeah, just, you did I just, I just went. time. That's amazing. <laughs> I practiced a lot, I Good have job. to say. So um, Beth, we have, I love our connection mm -hmm. because uh, we've done some wonderful things together. Yeah. Actually, we first met at the Hospice Muskoka fashion right, show yeah. where we were both modeling yes we were we were both models <laughs> for the fashion show yes and I have I've told the story a few times but I have to tell it one more time because I will be forever grateful okay because in my new uh, passion and purpose my new life uh, with love your life to death and the I just showed up movement doing a TED talk was one of my the ultimate goal and I had applied for a few and and I wasn't chosen so we had a conversation and then you looked at me and you said, would you ever consider doing a TED Talk? Yeah. And I said, like, okay, who, who told you to say that? <laughs> and lo and behold, you and I and LaGaia, who I've had on the yeah. show, and actually Nancy Osborne, who I've had oh, on the perfect. show, we all did our, uh, we took the stage at TEDx Aurelia uh, in March 2019. Yeah, it was, was extraordinary. Awesome. It was so great. It was so great. Yeah, was so great. welcome to the show. Thank you. Thank you again for that. It was uh, a really wonderful and life changing experience. Oh, no problem. I forgot like how excited you got. And I know. I remember thinking like, is oh. she just like putting this on yeah. for me? <laughs> so 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 I'm saying, am I being? Did she? Who yeah. told you to say that? And you're thinking, is she really this? No, no, yeah. I was. Um, but it was an incredible experience, and your topic. I am very passionate about, have been for many years, and it was called How Everyone Can Be a Superhero. Yeah. And we're going to chat about that today because um, we can all be superheroes. Yep. And how can we do that, Beth? Oh gosh, it's actually pretty easy. Yes. It takes almost no time at all mm -hmm. and no effort. Um, if you are an Ontario resident and you have a health card, all you need to do is take that health card and go to beadonor.ca. Right? And <laughs> yeah. just check your registration. Mm -hmm. And then if you are registered, you can actually specify what you'd like to donate or what you wouldn't. And if you aren't, then you can take the opportunity to register. And then once you've done that, the biggest, most important step to being a superhero is that you tell everyone you know that you've done it. Right. And show them how they can do it because that's the only way to eliminate the weight is to have donors. <laughs> so you are talking about being an organ donor mm -hmm. and registering as an organ donor yeah. and letting your family and friends mm -hmm. and whoever would have a say know that you want to be an, an organ donor that's, and have registered. Yeah, that's the most important piece because yes. if the family doesn't know your wishes, then they are then asked about it at the most horrifying moment, pretty much. And then right you know, putting them on the spot during that moment is really, really hard for them. And a lot of times it's like four out of 10 that people will say yes when they haven't had any information from that person right. prior. And then when they do know in advance, that shoots up to nine out of 10 people agreeing for donations. So that's a huge margin right there. So let's repeat that number just so that yeah. people really understand the importance of having those conversations, yeah. right? So, so if people don't know. If they don't have the conversation, only four out of 10 people get to be donors. If they do have the conversation, it becomes nine out of 10. Right, so yeah. I mean, it more than doubles. Yeah. It more than doubles. And so having been a nurse for 27 mm -hmm. years, I can say I've had the experience mm -hmm. of being that nurse in a room in those horrifying conversations of bringing up the talk yeah. about organ donation when families are grieving yeah. and in crisis. Mm -hmm. It is excruciating and awful. And we, and we could eliminate mm -hmm. that excessive suffering. Yeah. Right? Yeah. That's the whole point. Have those conversations before you need them exactly like it's it's such a different perspective if you if you like register and then you go to your family so guess who's a hero you know yeah, <laughs> like I'm guess a hero in a cape today yes. and show them how they can do it it's it was such an easy conversation for my family after everything like it made it simple for them and then immediately anyone I've talked to they just they'll go on and they're just they all thought they were registered mm -hmm. my mom thought she was registered and sure. she wasn't yeah so there's there's this transitional period from when we signed our cards because people still say don't forget to sign your donor card that's yes. not what we do anymore we have it's, to have an online registry right 
and um, then the conversation because even if you say yes I want to donate everything your family can veto that and they may yeah. do that out of that decision might be because of emotion yeah. and and you're, you're not thinking logically of course, yeah in a crisis and you're grieving yeah and so we can do two things we can eliminate excessive suffering mm -hmm. for our families mm -hmm. and we can save lives yeah I mean we can literally save lives yeah. and um, one thing that somebody that um, I spoke to when I went to the transplant games mm -hmm. uh, which I said wow there are so many people here I mean there were hundreds of people and yeah. it was just this glorious glorious event mm -hmm. and I said many of these people wouldn't be alive if it wasn't for organ donation mm -hmm. and someone corrected me and said none of them yeah. would be and that stayed with me yeah and another person whose husband is alive because his sister chose to be a living donor which we'll talk about <laughs> um, and donated a portion of her liver he is alive because of her generosity and she said organ donation doesn't save individuals mm -hmm. it saves families it does it's it's just such an important topic mm -hmm. to to have and again have the conversation before yeah before 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 and we'll mm -hmm. talk more about that but you kind of took it to a, a whole different level bath <laughs> yeah. because we are I mean advocating being a donor is when you die mm -hmm. not if PS <laughs> Yeah. When, when I'm sorry let's have that hard conversation yeah. we all die yeah. and and our death can literally we no longer need our organs mm -hmm. right we but we can save lives mm -hmm. and there are also many people who are living donors mm -hmm. yeah. so talk about what being a living donor and many people have saved a family member what is a being a living donor mean so uh, when you register well it's not really registration at that point when you seek to be a living donor a lot of times you will know someone that requires an organ of sorts. I know close to where we are, we do a lot of kidney and liver mm -hmm. um, donation. And so they will essentially go in for surgery and uh, when they wake up, they are, <laughs> they are, they are on bed rest for a little while. Yes, of um, course. But the person they care about is then able to wake up with them and to live. To live, and they are often much better off when they wake up. So yes. it, like the suffering that they've endured for so long is is almost completely mm -hmm. like disappearing it's almost immediately. They life. feel so different. Right. So um, it's it's a lot of uh, prep work, a lot of. Um, tests have to be done to make sure that you are healthy enough that's the biggest part mm -hmm. because when you are a live donor the focus is on your care sp specifically they yes. don't want you to be worse off After. for doing it because right. what is the point of that that doesn't really help right. um, so they they do a lot of workups and you have a lot um, a lot of tests done psychological tests to make mm -hmm. sure you're not being coerced all these things sure so um, it's it's a process, and that's another reason why we really encourage donation after we're gone, because mm -hmm. there would be less need for live donors altogether, right? Well, of course, yeah. of course, and and with so a living donor, because we can live with yeah. one kidney, yep. and so you may have a, a loved one who's been on dialysis oh, for yeah. years, or their, their kidneys are failing, yep. even dialysis is failing, so you can literally save their lives mm -hmm. and then with liver donation it is a portion yes of your liver you donate yes and it regenerates it regenerates yes 100 percent so, livers have two lobes and um, usually with children you're donating the smaller piece the smaller lobe and then it will regrow and it mm -hmm. regrows in both both people which is super cool yes. um, and then the larger piece tends to go for adults and again you regenerate so yeah you can 100%. have like percent yeah it's really really interesting so you don't uh it, it's like and your one kidney actually enlarges a bit when you donate a kidney oh, okay. to compensate which is right. super interesting as well um, but there are other organs we can donate while we're living mm -hmm. um, even a portion of lung can happen it just depends on where you are and what you have access to right um, I know for us here it's like we can do stem cells we can do bone marrow we can do bone so marrow, many things yes. while we're alive mm -hmm. to help others and it's incredible and I know we both know the lovely Sandra Holdsworth mm -hmm. who was uh, I mean a very passionate advocate Oh, she yeah. had a liver um, uh, she was an organ recipient yes. like 20 plus years yeah. ago 
I've had her on the show, and and she continues to be an advocate. Oh, yeah. um, so so there is the possibility of after you have died mm -hmm. to give life to others. Literally, you can yeah. save eight lives, and Live you can. On. <laughs> in, yes, that's right. And and what a beautiful part of your legacy. Mm -hmm. Or you can be a living donor and help a family member. Um, but again, you you took it one step further, <laughs> and I would share your incredible journey, Beth, because it's I'm in awe truly of what you've done. Um, so basically, I at the time had a friend who was very ill, and I could not help her, and I felt very helpless. So I thought of anything I could possibly do because it occurred to me, I'm like, if I can't help this person, how many families out there are feeling that way about someone they love? Mm -hmm. So I just started looking up organ donation on a whim in that moment. And then I realized how many things in my life sort of accumulated to get to that point. And um, then I started harassing Toronto General to let me be a living donor. <laughs> So um, at first I wasn't sure what I would want to donate. Um, so when I had a meeting with Dr. Levy at the time, he was head of transplant, I think. Um, he told me because I was just like, I want to give it all away. So you called <laughs> Toronto General and said, yeah. hi, I'd like to give him so, some of my organs. Right. So and I was like, just like, oh how do I be a living donor? And so anyway, it was it, the psychological testing, right? So, oh yeah, I can imagine. Uh, <laughs> they're like, uh, yeah, she needs right. a lot of it. <laughs> So he told me that I had to, uh, if I wanted to donate more than once, I had to do liver before kidney because having only one kidney might affect the chances of donating my liver. Okay. So, um, so I did uh, liver first, which is interesting. So when you when you go to donate your liver, the surgery itself is on par with open heart surgery. So that's wow. the level of danger. It's like one in 1,000 mm. danger. Wow. When you're donating a kidney, it's like one in 10,000. So the surgery itself is a mm. lot less dangerous, mm -hmm. which is interesting. So anyway, I just, I was so like headstrong about it and I just had such a positive just knowing that this was all going to work out that I was just like, yeah, nothing could stop me. So that started the hard conversation with my family because we had not talked about organ oh. donation even after death. So, oh my goodness. Wow. So you can imagine their response. Um, so was, yeah, so you, so how old were you at the time? I was, I was 29 when I decided to look into it and it yes. was 51 weeks later that I donated. Wow. So it was a long process. Yes. Yes. I had I had so many workups done and then I had to go redo them because you have to have your blood work done in like a small window prior. Mm -hmm. And because I was anonymously donating, we didn't know who I would match. We didn't know like initially I was trying to donate to a child, no, no child matched me. And then they found what they referred to as a small adult. Mm -hmm. So I ended up yeah, so, so just them. to clarify, so people really understand what we're talking about here is you couldn't help your friend, right. you wanted to do something great, you thought living, being a living donor, mm -hmm. and not only a living donor, but an, an anonymous donor because you, you didn't have any friends who needed <laughs> your liver at that time, Yeah, and so you chose to be an anonymous organ donor for mm -hmm. to donate a portion of your liver. Mm -hmm. And now you have to go and have that chat with your family. Right. I would love to have been a fly on the wall for that interesting conversation it must have been. So I really thoroughly educated myself before approaching my family yes, so that I had the call. answers for them. Yes. And so I could reassure them. And at first I had some opposition, clearly. That would be yes. scary. Mm -hmm. um, I understand that. and. And it's funny at the, after time went by, my dad ended up becoming my biggest supporter. He went oh. door to door with me because it turns out I had to fundraise. So it wasn't as anonymous as I would have liked. <laughs> so I had to tell people what I was doing. I really wanted to just do it and have it be a secret forever. So you had to fundraise I had to because... fundraise because it takes three months off work to right. recover. After. So, so I had to plan for that. I talked to uh, the social worker at the hospital and he's just like, yeah, you have to do this. And I was like, oh. So it's either wait until I'm completely debt free and can save the money, right? Or you know, and share I'm just my like, story. I've and... matched a person. I am not waiting. I have right. to be able to do this. So um, that's not fair to them. So yeah, I started fundraising, and then that meant advocating. That meant meeting people within the community. Mm. And honestly, that's probably the biggest thing that flipped everything around. And so I, I decided then I'm like, okay, if I have to be, if I have to tell people what I'm doing, yes, I am going to make it useful. I'm mm -hmm. going to make a difference with it because it was uncomfortable for me to tell people what I was doing. Yes. 
I even lost friendships over it and that was something I did read about online. People will stop because they don't understand what you're doing or They're if afraid. you're fundraising, mm -hmm. they, they assume it's like it's bad reasons behind sure. it. So and I get that. So I ended up losing some friendships, which is fine. I gained so many more. Yes. Right. <laughs> so, the right friendships. Right, the right mm -hmm. friendships. So mm -hmm. um it was completely life changing more than I could have imagined. And the biggest piece for me was I really wanted the recipient to understand that it took a community to make it happen. Yeah. So I ended up, I, I get, I got everyone to basically come together and write inspiring messages for oh my the recipient, goodness. which I then put into a card for them. We were allowed to give each other one card. Anything beyond that was considered a gift. I'm like, ah, oh, the organ's a gift, but whatever. Right. <laughs> it's a really big gift, yes. So yeah, and, and to protect the anonymity, which I'm completely on board with. Wow. Yeah. I mean, it's just such a wow story. So you were, so you had you had no choice but to share your yeah. story. You wanted to just fly under the radar with this, but it ended up changing your life mm -hmm. in an extraordinary positive way because I know you are a tremendous advocate yeah. for organ donation. Mm -hmm. And if this was just something you just kind of did and it... That probably wouldn't have happened. Probably wouldn't have happened. Yeah. So isn't that extraordinary how yeah. something you were really uncomfortable with turned out to be something so positive. Well, it's so funny to me because I'm like, I'm trying to give a gift and you can't, you can't escape getting it in return when you do it. It's like the, the kindness, it's oh yeah, at least threefold coming back and it's continual. Mm -hmm. Like I, I haven't stopped, it's been six years and I still have so many amazing things happen because of it. That the day at the hospice, like yes. model walk, that was because of this. I wow. met Sandra because mm -hmm. of this. Someone linked me up with her and it was just like, interesting, the, the ripple the effect. Ripple yeah. effect. <laughs> yes, yes, the ripple effect, yes, the ripple effect. Yeah. I mean, it's just, it's so extraordinary. Now, so the letter that you received from the recipient, yes. can you say a few things or something that it said? Like, so, I can't imagine what that would have meant to you. It was interesting when I got it. So basically what I did, because like I said, when I had to be open and honest about what I was doing, I yeah. went like hyper open and honest. I created a vid video diary of my entire journey from the day I told my family to like after I was healed and done. Like it was mm -hmm. a long, it's about 30 videos long wow. and ends with my TED talk oh. on, yeah, like of so my great. journey on yes. YouTube. And so I ended up reading the card the day I got it and I made a video of it. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, I, I hope that doesn't like, you know, spoil the anonymity for if the person right. ever sees it. Right. But, um, but I was so excited and because it wasn't just me, like it literally took a community to fundraise with me, to support me in order for me to do it. I don't think this was just mine. I feel like this is everyone. So I needed to show them what they did mm -hmm. and make that like, cause they did a big thing, you know? So I'm going to just stop for one moment and I do, it does take a village. It takes a community, mm -hmm. but Beth, you are the person who chose to anonymously give a portion of your liver mm -hmm. to a stranger, mm -hmm. someone you do not know, yeah. and there was a three-month recovery. Nobody else had to do that three-month recovery. You are a superhero. Sure. Okay. <laughs> I'll, you, I you've earned the that. cape, okay? You've earned the cape. I always say I'm like, I slept through the hard part, so... <laughs> Just being very modest. But yeah, you're a hero. Um, I, I am so passionate about organ donation and uh, and having those conversations. Um, donating a portion of my liver to a stranger, I'm probably not that nice. I'm not going to lie. But what you're saying is, in doing that, it changed your life, and you got so much more. In return. I that's so extraordinary. Much. It's crazy, and it feels almost like selfish in a lot of ways. Like, because for me, I was thinking about, because like I said, there were so many reasons behind this. That was just the the catalyst. But at the time, I was just like, you know, I just wish we had a world full of people that would just be nice to others because that they're human and not mm -hmm. because they knew them or were getting something in return. And I'm like, I guess I should do that myself. So I wanted to be the change. So I'm like, maybe if I do this, this will give that random person hope in humanity. Yes. Because that's what I want. Mm -hmm. I want hope in humanity. I want to believe that there are people out there that are willing to give of themselves without any strings attached. Right. So and there are, aren't there? Well, there has to be because I am now, right? Right. So that's Absolutely. what I was doing. I needed yes. to I needed to see it myself. I needed to be it myself. And then 
from there, look at how many I've met, right? Like I've been surrounded by, yes. exactly. So like I said, I feel spoiled in a lot of ways. Like if I, honestly, it's such a surreal experience. And now that it's been six years, if I didn't have my scar, it would, it would almost be like it didn't happen. Right. Because I don't see the recipient. I don't know what they're doing. I don't know how they're doing. Mm -hmm. So it's if, if all these things weren't continually happening, it would right. almost be like a distant dream. Right. Right. But you you are changing many lives because you now have your TED Talk, which I encourage everybody to watch. All you have to do is Google it. And you gave some startling statistics yeah. um, oh. about people waiting for organ donation. Mm -hmm. And I think like every day, I, I rewatched your talk every day, 20 people die waiting for a transplant, mm -hmm. right? And here, but here's another aha moment I think that people need to hear is that what about, who is five times more likely, you're five times more likely to require to an require organ require than to be a donor. Right. Yeah. So again, you are five times more likely to require a transplant yeah. than to be a donor. And if you're willing to receive one, then why aren't you willing to give one? Well, there you go. And and here I even brought, so I have my t-shirt, of course. And, and here's for everybody else. <laughs> I love this t-shirt. What does it say? Don't take your organs to heaven. Heaven knows we need them here. Yeah. Have the conversations, have those chats with your family because we all die. We are all meant to die. Mm -hmm. We're not meant to live forever. That is such an extraordinary gift mm -hmm. that we can give and having the conversations long before someone is facing end of life. And, and a lot of people say to me, oh, I don't know if I could be a donor. I'm this oh, age. Yeah. I'm this. Just sign the card or just, just register. Yeah. They'll, they'll let them decide. Yeah, they won't. <laughs> they cannot tell until you are gone right. and they are able to examine. They yes. can't tell if you're if you're eligible. So, I mean just go just for register. it Do, like you can't make that decision the medical team does like well you're just being a good example exactly, yeah. if nothing else and exactly. there are so few circumstances where those organs can actually it, be used exactly that's the other so, factor it's really really hard to have that perfect set of circumstances right so if we all just normalize and i know we've chatted about um in some countries they have the opt out yeah Right, so mm -hmm. explain just briefly about opt-out and opt-in. Okay, so opt-out is um, basically the country, it's, it's normalized to the point where when you die, that's just part of the death process, mm -hmm. you donate your organs. Um, they have many factors that make that successful. Spain is the best example mm -hmm. of that. Um, and so there are places now that are trying to incorporate an opt-out system. It, it's a big adjustment for the population, for yes. sure. It mm -hmm. can, it can create some questions of um, autonomy and stuff like that. Sure. Uh, but the idea is you can still do that. You can yeah. opt out. You, you can have opt that option. Um, opt in is the, it's, it's not assumed and you can just, um, you have to make the step to say, yes, this is what I want. Right. Which means having the conversation. Right. Yeah. So that's yes. the challenge, it right? Is a challenge. Because the people don't, people don't generally want to be uncomfortable, so they avoid it. But oh, you are preaching to the choir, I like know. talking about <laughs> death and dying. Yeah. But here's the thing, and why I feel that the opt-out method, method is so much better because many people have the the intention. Yeah. Oh yes, I Absolutely. totally am going to register, mm -hmm. and you forget because yeah. it's awkward, it's uncomfortable, and you ju you just don't get to it. Yeah. So by the presuming consent. If you don't want, to, you need to have those conversations, yeah. and you need to take action. Yeah. Um, and I just, I think having all of those conversations and having these conversations early. Yes. I called our son Tyler out west when he was 22. I said, and I said, how do you start it? I said, hey, Ty, awkward conversation coming up. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, oh, I never thought of that, mom. I said, yeah, I know. That's why we're having this conversation because yeah. if I have to make this decision, I don't want to have to make this decision. I want us to already have had this conversation. Yeah. So just think like think about this is awkward and uncomfortable. Have the conversation, register, understand mm -hmm. everyone's wishes and then go on to living your greatest life. If anything, it's less awkward and uncomfortable for your family to know. So you're saving them that. Absolutely. And the pain of having to make that choice for you. Right. Yeah. So let's just have those conversations. Mm -hmm. Let's just do it. And mm -hmm. and so Okay, so besides being a living organ donor, you uh, you have, when we chat, I'm thinking, 
Beth is doing all of these wonderful things. I can't even quite keep up. But Neither can Beth. <laughs> which is, but I mean, it's a wonderful problem to have yeah, it because is. everything you do is great. Talk so, to us about, yes. Okay, well, first off, continuing on with organ donation, there's mm -hmm. a program now where we are doing a high school outreach in the mm. GTA, and we are teaching the teens about organ donation That's and fantastic. the importance of registering and telling their family. Oh. So by the time they go for their license, they can actually have that love it done so that's Amazing. pretty exciting so Very i get to exciting. go and advocate for that and share my story which is super fun oh awesome um and so we've got that going i have got well speaking of ripples the ripple of yes yes yeah, so we have the ripple of kindness which originated in barry in 2016 and has since rippled into aurelia mm -hmm. which is really exciting if you haven't checked it out yet and um i am now bringing that ripple up to muskoka with my amazing partner courtney provan she's Amazing. helping make this Thank happen you, yes. <laughs> um, and so we're really excited we're having um, yeah it's 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 huge so basically the ripple works with uh, like-minded women coming together like each of us probably if we could would donate a huge chunk of money sure. to a charity if we could but yeah. it's not realistic mm -hmm. but when you combine your efforts it is realistic yes. and so as a group we nominate and we vote on a local charity and then we collectively donate and so, so amazing. there have been huge, huge numbers going to local charities like Barry, for example, have they've now got 250, I think to over 250 members. They actually have to split up their donations. Oh, my gosh. I because, love it. So each donation is $25,000. Oh, my gosh. And they do like four a year. And it's like and that's how big it's become already. And I wow. just it's that's incredible. It's such an easy way to um, give back. I love it. Yeah. And I told you that this would go by quickly, didn't I? Yes. Because we were out of time. It's quick. Ripple yeah. of Kindness yeah. is in Barrie and Aurelia and now coming to Muskoka. Yes. Thanks to you and Courtney. And I love everything you're doing. Everyone needs to check it out. Ripple of Kindness. Yeah. And thank you so much for everything that you do. You are absolutely extraordinary. Thank you. And of course, we'll tell everyone to register at beadonor.ca. Yes. So, thanks for joining us for Real Life Talks. This is a show about learning how to just show up for yourself and just show up for others and have important conversations like organ donation and kindness. So, if you want to be empowered and resilient and just show up, my call to action is always plan your life, plan your death, and then just love your life to death. And always bring your own tambourine to the party. Thanks. Bye for now. Mm -hmm.